When a swarm of alien insects invades Earth and starts infecting people, Ben will need to use all the power of the Omnitrix to save humanity. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2009 movie, Ben 10, Alien Swarm. Outside Bellwood, Kevin goes to an abandoned warehouse where a group of bikers arrive wanting to sell something they call alien technology. Upon opening the case, the men reveal tubes full of chips that are apparently deactivated. Since not even the vendors know what it is, Kevin decides to call Gwen to analyze the object and Ben realizes that this thing is causing interference in the Omnitrix. Tired of wasting time, the salesman says he's never seen buyers like them and a woman in a helmet replies that it's because they're plumbers, a secret interplanetary security troop. Curious, Ben asks her how she knows this and she reveals that she is Elena Validus, a former plumber who was expelled along with her father Victor. Without realizing that someone is watching the conversation, Ben seems surprised by the reunion and reveals that his grandfather told him that she and his father left the plumbers because they moved away. Which Elena immediately denies. Confused, Ben asks why she is with the illegal market traders and the girl explains that she set the whole thing up so that she could talk to them and ask for help, because Victor has disappeared without a trace. While they talk, the stalker in the beam begins to control the chips that break the capsules and fly out like a swarm of insects, attacking everyone inside the warehouse. To defend himself, Ben tries to transform himself into an alien and realizes that the Omnitrix has stopped working completely, leaving Kevin and Gwen with the mission of wiping out the alien insects. Caught in the middle of the confusion, the salesmen get on their motorcycles and drive out of the warehouse while the Insatronics destroy the building's beams, barely managing to escape. Inside, Ben analyzes the chips and suspects that it must be some kind of remote-controlled nanotechnology, noticing the presence of the stranger in the beam soon after. As soon as he sees him, the young man suspects that it is he who is controlling the creatures and decides to do something to stop him, using the Omnitrix to transform himself into the spider monkey, but because of the interference, he ends up taking the form of Big Chill. With his freezing breath, the alien manages to trap the chips in a block of ice which then breaks into millions of pieces, defeating several insects at once. Now that the cloud of interplanetary locusts is contained, Ben goes after the person who is controlling everything and tries to freeze him with his breath, but the villain manages to jump off the beam and throws a cloud of insects towards Gwen, forcing Big Chill to abandon the fight to help his cousin. With that, the villain has the break he needed to escape and Elena disappears along with him, making both Gwen and Kevin sure that she was with the stranger and that it was all just a trap. Even so, Ben is curious about the story of the expulsion and decides to go to the plumber's headquarters to ask his grandfather about Victor. Back at the communication center, the trio wait for Flight Max to arrive and decide to take the time to scan some of the chips they have collected, discovering that they are technological devices and biological life forms at the same time. Curious, Gwen tries to use her powers to read the energy signature of the devices, but this doesn't work and Kevin decides to track it through the computer. While he's working, Ben suggests they go after Elena and ends up starting an argument with Gwen, which only ends when Grandpa Max arrives at the lab. As soon as he sees the device they're analyzing, the leader of the plumber says he's seen it somewhere before, but can't remember exactly where. Thinking this is the perfect opportunity, Ben tries to ask about Victor's expulsion when he is interrupted by the alarm system warning of the presence of an intruder inside the complex. Following the invader's energy signature, the group reaches Max's room where Elena is already waiting for them. As soon as he sees the girl, Grandpa asks what she's doing there and tries to throw her out, but Ben takes the girl's side and tells him about Victor's disappearance, who was probably taken by the person controlling the chips. Still, everyone else is against the girl and Kevin leads her out of the lab, leaving Max alone with his grandchildren to explain what's going on. On the computer, the man shows Victor's file and reveals that he was caught stealing the alien chips from the safe, and that he was therefore expelled from the troop and banished forever. Even so, Ben argues that Elena has nothing to do with her father's mistakes and argues that she is the best lead to get to the person who is controlling the insects, but Max refuses to believe what she says is true and Ben decides to act on his own, leaving the headquarters and taking his grandfather's motorcycle to go after the girl alone. While they're driving to the place where Elena got the chips, Victor is walking down an alley when two criminals try to mug him, telling him he shouldn't be walking around alone. In response, the villain reveals that he is accompanied and releases thousands of insectronic chips that attack the two, invading their bodies and turning them into zombies. Unaware that Victor is waiting for them with his army of infected, Ben and Elena arrive at the place where she found the chips and start exploring. But while they investigate inside, the villain is already outside with his infected loading boxes and stashes into the van of a transport company called Ship It. Despite the movement, neither of them realizes what is happening and they continue looking for clues until they arrive at Victor's laboratory, where they find several notes in a Ship It delivery form. 
While trying to figure out what's going on, the two are surprised by a group of very suspicious people who offer to help. Watching the strangers, Ben notices something strange in people's eyes and Elena can see the chips walking around inside them, making them realize that all these people are being controlled by the alien insects. Suddenly, one of the infected says he wants to take them to meet the queen and they begin to approach, forcing Ben to activate the Omnitrix. But because of the interference, the young man is unable to select any aliens and they are forced to flee. After leaving through the fire exit, the two realize they are trapped and Ben takes advantage of the instability to overload the Omnitrix, creating a shockwave that pushes everyone away and opens a gap for them to escape. Racing against time, they get on their bikes and start riding away, but Elena ends up falling off the vehicle and Ben is forced to go back to rescue her. With the girl on his back, he manages to get away from the danger and says that the next step should be to go to ship it, because only then will they be able to find out what Victor sent. At the plumber's headquarters, Kevin and Gwen finally manage to trace the energy signatures of the Incitronics and discover that most of them are concentrated in ship its distribution center together, they invade the place and start looking for any sign of the extraterrestrial creatures, finding records of shipments all over the world. While going through the paperwork, the two are surprised by an employee who tells them that the company is closed and asks them to come back another time. Finding it strange that the man is there so late, Gwen asks why he is still working and the employee replies that his job is to serve the queen, making them realize that the stranger is one of the infected. To neutralize the threat, Kevin absorbs the properties of the wood and throws a punch that sends the zombie employee flying, giving them the opportunity to get the documents and return to the car. In the vehicle, the couple are putting on their seatbelts when they notice that the weird employee is right behind them making some strange movements. When she looks ahead, Gwen realizes that the man is controlling the chips, which take on spherical shapes and start throwing themselves against the windshield, almost breaking the glass and forcing Kevin to accelerate to get away. With his challenger, the young man drives into Super Rapley while the chips couple up and form three gigantic balls that start rolling behind them. Trying to lose them, Kevin makes an evasive maneuver and manages to get one of the spheres to hit the wall, but it soon rebuilds itself and comes after them again. As this doesn't work out, Kevin decides to try and beat them at speed and activates the turbo mode on his dodge, but the crazy acorns are still after him. With no options, Kevin goes to a construction site and takes advantage of the fact that they are alone to drive over the spheres, but this ends up causing the car to overturn and get all crumpled up. Even with the impact, the two manage to get out almost unscathed and start looking for the sphere that appears even bigger on top of a viaduct, ready to crush them. Down below, Kevin prepares for battle and turns his body into stone when Ben jumps off his motorcycle to help, assuming the form of the Humungasaur in midair. Already transformed into the alien Lagerton, Ben charges at the sphere and destroys it with a punch, but the chips manage to regroup and turn into circles that start firing laser bursts at him. Thanks to his armored skin, the Humungasaur resists the projectiles and manages to smash some of them to pieces, but the Insectronics don't give up so easily and begin to gather around Ben, forming a barrier that prevents him from leaving. With its gigantic strength, the Humungasaur manages to escape from the semi-sphere of insects that regroup again and turn into a kind of insane robotic anaconda, forcing Ben to take Kevin's car and use it as a baseball bat to hit the insects. Now that things are calmer, Ben returns to his human form and talks to the rest of the group about what they should do, coming to the conclusion that the best choice is to take a new sample to the lab for analysis. With that decided, the trio take Elena to Grandpa Max's room, who is following the news about the Insectronics that are spreading all over the world. As soon as he hears what his grandchildren have to say, the leader of the plumbers decides to analyze the new sample and discovers that they are just extraterrestrial peripherals. With the analysis complete, Max decides to put the specimen back in the jar and ends up letting one of them slip out without even realizing it. Without noticing the fugitive walking around the table, the group begins to think of a way to deal with them all at once and Ben remembers that the infected were talking about a queen. That being the case, all they have to do is eliminate the leader of the insects and no new individuals will be born, which will result in the end of the entire colony. With the difficult mission of finding the queen, everyone sits down in front of the computer and tries everything they can to track her down, but because of the excitement, none of them notice when the escaped insect climbs up Max's arm. A few hours later, Ben decides to ask his grandfather for help and finds him already infected and trying to throw a monitor at his head. When they hear the screams, the rest of the group comes to help and Kevin solves the problem by knocking Max out with a blow to the head, but they end up getting distracted and the leader of the plumbers activates the smoke machine, blocking everyone's vision and allowing him to leave through the tunnels without anyone being able to stop him. While everyone is lost without Max's presence, Ben manages to stay calm and remembers the mission to take down the queen, but as they still don't know where she is, they have to go back to the computer until they locate her. 
At headquarters, the group begins to analyze the map of where the insects are concentrated and realizes that most of them are in large metropolises. But unlike the others, a bizarrely large group is concentrated in a town in rural Missouri. Researching the place a little more, Gwen discovers that it is the headquarters of Shipit and Ben comes to the conclusion that it is from there that the queen is working. As their car has been destroyed and they need to find a way to get to the site, Kevin decides to bring Ben's birthday present forward and shows him the vehicle he was making. With the new car, the Omnitrix bearer drives through Missouri until they finally arrive at Shipit headquarters, where they notice a huge movement of infected. With confirmation that this is the right place, the group breaks into the facility and sees Flight Max talking to another infected, but as they can't do anything to help him, they move on until they come across a large assembly line. At the center of it all, Kevin sees Victor and realizes that he was the one in the warehouse during the negotiation of the chips, making everyone turn against Elena and think that she knew her father was behind it all along. To defend herself, the girl says she didn't know anything and suggests that he's infected, which makes a lot of sense, since he's acting exactly like Max. Even so, Kevin doesn't believe in her innocence and accuses her of being a traitor, but as always, Ben takes her side and manages to convince the others to give the girl another chance. With that cleared up, Ben goes back to analyzing Victor and finally realizes that he is laying eggs, which means that the queen is certainly inside him. Knowing this, Kevin suggests that they should destroy Victor and Elena begs them not to, making Ben remember his promise to save him. Even though he doesn't know if it will work, the bearer of the Omnitrix decides that he will transform himself into Alien X and end everything once and for all, but Gwen argues that this is extremely dangerous, because if someone so powerful is infected by the insects, it will be the end of humanity. While the group discusses what to do, Elena ends up being discovered by one of the infected who grabs her from behind and alerts the entire swarm to the presence of the intruders. With no time to think, Ben decides that he will use the Omnitrix anyway and selects an alien, but because of the interference of the insects, he ends up becoming extremely small and is transformed into the Nanomech, a hybrid alien that is the fusion between a human and a nanochip. The size of an ant, Ben flies to Victor and shrinks even more until he manages to enter the villain's nose, which means that he begins to hear the queen's voice as soon as he enters the villain's system. While his friends distract the infected outside, Nanomech flies to the queen and begins to fight the colony leader who is doing everything she can to recruit him. After being rejected, the female decides that she will end humanity once and for all and tries to activate the chips to begin her apocalypse, but before she can do so, Nanomech manages to emit one last burst of energy that disintegrates the queen's body. This causes all the infected to return to their normal state and the chips to self-destruct. With that, Ben is finally able to get out of Victor, who is finally back in control of his own body, as is Grandpa Max, who congratulates his grandchildren on the success of the mission and apologizes to his former partner for not trusting him. Finally, Max offers the job of leader of the plumbers to Ben, who rejects it almost instantly, saying it's not time to retire yet. As a result, Max continues in his position and both Victor and Elena return to the plumbers team, with the mission of fighting future alien threats alongside the Tennysons. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.